In this video, we're going to look at um, hypothesis test for population mean, and we're going to do this in StatCrunch. So here's the information we're given. Initial hypothesis, um, 50 and then less than 50 for the mean. A random sample size of 24 obtained from a population that's known to be normally distributed. That's important. It has to be normally distributed or the population size has to be greater than or equal to 30 and uh, no outliers. Here's our information, 47.2 for the mean here, and standard deviation 13.7. And we want to get the T statistic here. So we go into StatCrunch, we open it up, and then we go into Stat, T statistics, one sample, and in this case we have a summary. We were given the mean and standard deviation. Let me put that information in here. The sample mean was 47.2 sample standard deviation 13.7, the sample size is 24. We're doing a hypothesis test. Our null mean that we were given, our mu naught is 50. And we got a test we're doing, a left hand tail test. Click next and calculate. This will give us the T statistic of negative 1.001. And now we got to determine what we're going to do with that information. So we need to find the level of significance we want at a point 0.1 level of significance. And we need to determine the critical value for the t distribution. So we get our t table here. And we look at the degrees of freedom that we have, which are 23 degrees of freedom, one less than this. And then we look at what level of significance we want, point 0.1. So point 0.1 is right here. And then we go down to 23. And 23 happens to be right here. So we have 1.319. Now it's a left hand tail test, so this is going to be negative 1.319. That's why it's negative. Now we have to know what we're going to do with that information. If the t statistic that we got is less than, is to the left, of that critical t value, we will reject the null hypothesis. But because that t statistic that we got here of negative 1.001 is not to the left of this value, that means it's over here, not in the shaded area, we do not reject the null hypothesis. So no, because the t statistic that we found does not fall in the critical region. So for a left hand tail test, our t statistic needed to fall here for us to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, let's move on to another problem. In this problem, we're going to look at the p-value now, and it would be the same steps basically, except we're going to use data, and then look at the p-value and make a, a, a conclusion off of that. The mean waiting time at a drive-through fast food restaurant from the time an order is placed to the time the order is received is 87.2 seconds. A manager devises a new drive-through system that she believes will decrease the wait time. As a test, she initiates the new system at a restaurant and measures the wait time for 10 randomly selective order orders. The wait times are provided in the table. Okay, so we need to do a few things with this information as well. There's 10 items, so we need to know that it's normally distributed. If we do a probability plot, we see that it is. Does Nothing on the outside follows that. And if we do a box plot, there are no outliers, so we're good to go. Those conditions are satisfied. So you can do those by yourself if you like. The, the pictures were given here for us. Now it says, is the new system effective? Here's our hypothesis equal to 87.2. And then it was, she believes it will decrease. So less than, so it's a left hand tail test. Okay. Now we need to get our T statistic in order to get the P value. Well, StatCrunch gives you both right away. So it's the same process. We just open this data in StatCrunch. We go to stat, t statistics, one sample with data this time. Now you can use with summary if you only have the summary, but we have data, so we do that route. We click where the data is. We're doing a hypothesis test with our null mean or mu naught being the 87.2. Then we need to pick which what we're doing, a left hand tail test and then calculate. Now as before, 
we're given same information in this box, the degrees of freedom and the t-stat, but we're also given the p-value. So you can get the same information just with the given values as uh, you're given the statistics, the p-values over here on the right. So negative 1.820, yep, there it is, round up, t-stat, and then the p-value is 0 0.0511, and we have that. Okay, we're going to make a conclusion now based on the p-value. Well, the level significance we're looking at is 0.1 level significance, and if the p-value is less than this level significance, then we um, conclude that the new system is effective. So we reject the null hypothesis. So if our p-value is less than the level significance, you reject the null hypothesis. And we could also see that we would reject the null hypothesis with the t-statistic. 10 items, 9 degrees of freedom, 0.1 puts me at negative 1.383. The t-statistic is to the left of that, so it's in the critical area, thus we would reject the null hypothesis. So in both cases, you reject the null hypothesis, p-value is left in significance, so there's sufficient evidence to conclude the new system is effective. So that's how you complete hypothesis testing in uh, StatCrunch.